Here she lays her eggs. The caterpillars, when they hatch, stay feeding on the gentian for a couple of weeks. But eventually they fall to the ground. There are ants everywhere in a meadow like this and they soon find it. It smells just like one of their own larvae and they start to haul it back to where one of their larvae should be, in their nest. Other foragers from the same nest have found another. During the next few weeks, as many as half a dozen may be taken back to the nest. Here, they're hauled down to the nursery chambers and put with the ants other eggs and larvae. And because the caterpillars continue to produce a pheromone exactly like that produced by the young ants themselves, they're treated as if they were young ants, even though they're bigger and a different colour. The caterpillars even mimic the sound the ants make when they beg for food, so the workers dutifully feed and clean them. You might think that this caterpillar has protected itself very well by deceiving these ants, but life in the undergrowth is full of surprises. An ichneumon wasp. It too, like the blue butterfly, wants to get its young into an ant's nest. But not merely as lodgers, it has a more sinister intention. Somehow or other, in a meadow full of ants' nests, it can detect which one harbors a butterfly caterpillar. And this, it decides, is one of those. Once inside, the ants start to attack it, as you might expect. But then, the ants' behavior changes. There's pandemonium. The wasp has released a pheromone that makes the ants attack one another. With the defenders fighting among themselves, the wasp is able to go deeper into the nest. It's reached the nursery, and here lie the caterpillars. Now they are defenseless. The wasp sets about injecting each of them with an egg. A few ants do their best to prevent this, but there is no real opposition. While most of the ants continue to fight among themselves, the wasp finds a second caterpillar. Another egg is laid. The wasp leaves. With the wasp gone, the ant colony slowly returns to normal. The caterpillars are still there, alive and apparently well, and the ants continue to care for them. Once the caterpillars are fully grown, each starts to construct the chrysalis, which all butterflies need as a protection while they turn themselves into adults. Each chrysalis is cleaned and protected by the ants as if it were one of their own pupae. One begins to hatch. Out of it comes, yes, a blue butterfly. It leaves its foster home. Out in the open, its limp wings can expand. And now it's ready to flutter and flirt, just as its parents did.
and the ants are still bewitched by the traces of pheromone clinging to the empty shell the butterfly leaves behind. But there are still others in the nest, as yet unhatched. And out of this one comes not a butterfly, but a wasp. Hardwired into the microscopic brain of this ordinary looking insect are a whole series of skills, sensitivities and reactions that will enable it in its turn to give its own offspring a special start in life it can detect what the ants themselves find undetectable. It can tell the difference between an ant larva and the butterfly larva. What is more, in a meadow of a hundred ants' nest, it will be able to find the one that contains the butterfly caterpillar. How it does it, we have no idea. So it seems that among the animals of the undergrowth, there are many beneficial partnerships but exploitation and deception can work just as well. <laughs>